Hey guys, it's Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. So today I am going to be revisiting some of my old favorites videos. So I like to do these videos every so often just to kind of follow up on some things that were featured in favorites videos at least a year ago. So today we're going to be re revisiting January 2018 and March 2018. I didn't do a favorites video in February, but let's talk about these products and whether or not they're still favorites a year later. So a couple of these things, coincidentally, I just recently talked about in my best makeup under $10 video. The first favorite from January 2018 was my e.l.f. Beautifully Bare Natural Glow Face Palette. It also says Total Face Palette on the back. I don't really know what they call this, but it is part of their Beautifully Bare collection, and it has uh, two blushes, a bronzer, and a highlight. This, <laughs> you can see it's gotten a lot of love. If you go back to that January video, from last year, there was no pan on any of this, and since then I have have so much pan on the bronzer and the highlight. Um, probably gonna need to repress those soon because it's getting hard to even get it out of there with a brush. Um, I also should probably work on hitting pan on these blushes too because I have a long way to go on those. But the cool thing about these is you can actually pop out each individual pan, and if you were if you happen to have more than one palette like this from them. You could kind of mix and match and switch out what's in here, which is kind of cool. This is the only e.l.f. face palette I have, so I can't do that, but that is an option in case you didn't know that. Um, but I still love this. I love to travel with it, especially because it has two blush colors, and the bronzer and highlight are just like really universally flattering no matter what type of look I'm doing. I feel like all of these work really well for any look, and so when I'm traveling, I feel like this is the only set of face products I really need to bring, or like cheek products that I really need to bring. If I'm low on space and I'm trying to pack really minimally, this is typically what I go for because it just has everything I need in it for blush, for bronzer, and for highlight. So I do still love this, I do still highly recommend it, that's why I also talked about it in my top 10 under 10 video. The next favorite from last January was this EcoTools Blending and Bronzing Brush. I still like this, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily my ultimate favorite. I was mostly probably using this, I think, for bronzer at the time. I still use it for that, actually, quite frequently. This is kind of a duo fiber brush, and so the bristles are a little bit spaced out, um, which is nice if you're going for like a really diffused look. Sometimes I also like to just use like my e.l.f. complexion brush for bronzer. And then lately I've mostly just been using my contour to kind of work around the temples a little bit as a bronzer. Today I used my Wet n Wild uh, Dulce de Leche contouring palette and I applied the contour first and then I kind of just worked it up a little bit to my temples and just around the perimeter of my face. So I haven't been using this as much but it is still my go-to if I were to be doing like a lot of just bronzer. Um, instead of contour, this is a good brush because it's kind of big and it does allow for a really nice diffused look. Um, so, I, I don't know, it's nice. I think I almost wish it were a little bit more wispy, like the bristles are still kind of short. But I do still think it's a good brush. I just wouldn't say that it's like a top favorite anymore. The next favorite was the Balm Nude Dude Eyeshadow Palette. I, <laughs> this palette will always have a special place in my heart because it was the first high-end palette that I ever bought. I'm pretty sure it was. That's always what I remember, unless it actually might not have been the very first. It is the oldest high-end palette in my collection that I still own. I think I might have owned a Too Faced palette before this and decluttered it. But that was, I, don't, I almost don't even count that because that wasn't even one of their like permanent line palettes. It was kind of like a cheapo holiday palette that wasn't very good. So I kind of consider this to be my first like real high-end palette purchase, even though it might not have technically been my first. <laughs> but I do still love a lot of the shades in here. I love the shade Flirty. I love the shade Fabulous. Feisty is a really nice like mauve crease color. This is getting old. I have had it since I think summer of 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and so it's it maybe 2016. Now I can't remember. <laughs> this is definitely one of the oldest palettes I own, if not the oldest. And so I should probably work on maybe hitting some pan in here and um, maybe using this more just because I definitely don't use it as much now as I used to. 
and I don't know why that is, but it is still, it is a very nice palette, especially when I'm going for a neutral look. I love the kind of rosy vibes that you get with some of these shades, and overall it is a really pretty palette. The shimmers are really nice and pigmented, the mattes are really blendable. Um, I wouldn't say that it's my absolute favorite palette anymore. I don't know what my favorite palette is now. Probably... I don't even know if I have a favorite, to be honest. So this isn't like my top favorite. I don't think everyone needs to like run out and buy this, but I do still love it and it is still very special to me. So apparently that was also the month that I think I first discovered these reusable makeup cloths. I can't believe that was over a year ago already, but in that favorites video back last January, I talked about how I was loving the Fresh Face makeup removing cloths. These are ones that I found at TJ Maxx and since then I've bought some from Amazon and then my aunt gave me some as a gift for Christmas from the brand Always Off. I also talked about these in my top 10 under 10 video. So yes, they are absolutely still favorites. I use them every single night to remove my makeup. You just saturate these with warm water and it removes all your eye makeup, all your face makeup. So it completely eliminates the need for any kind of extra makeup remover product or cleansing balm or micellar water or any of that. And um, it's reusable so I don't have to keep purchasing um, products over and over again. I can just use this to remove my makeup and I have a bunch now. I've been kind of collecting them so that I don't have to do laundry as often and I just wash them with my towels when I do laundry um, and they clean up really nicely that way. These are 100% still a favorite. If I could recommend like one thing from all of this it would be these because these are just total game changers. It was a while ago that I found these at TJ Maxx but there's tons of different kinds that you can get on Amazon. I will link a few um, but they're relatively inexpensive especially considering all the money you save not having to buy other makeup removing products. Another thing that was a favorite last January, this is makeup related but it's not like a makeup product. It is this mirror from Conair. This is their lighted makeup remover. It plugs into the wall so you don't have to worry about batteries, which is nice. I'm not sure if the bulb in here would ever uh, burn out. I'm not. It's, it's held up for over a year. I got this, I think, in December of 2017, so it's been over a year since I've been using this. The bulb is still going strong. It has a magnified side and then a regular side. I still really like this. I use it, I keep it at my desk where I do my makeup most of the time. I also use it when I film. I just bring it over and I don't light it up. <laughs> when I'm filming because I already have my ring light, but um, I do, I will say that now that I'm used to doing my makeup on camera and having a ring light, it, <laughs> this doesn't seem bright enough to me now. So usually when I'm using it, I also have a lamp right next to it at my desk slash vanity, whatever you want to call it. I always have the lamp on too because I feel like I do need a little bit more light than what this provides. It has three light settings, so dim and then medium and then the brightest that it goes and you just tap it at the base when it's plugged in to turn on the light which is pretty cool um, it's just like really easy to turn on and off and then you just keep tapping it to turn it off and so I do still really like it I think it might be around forty dollars I love the brand Conair they make like hair tools and all kinds of stuff and um, all their products are pretty inexpensive for the quality and um, I mean even their curling irons are like under ten dollars. I used their curling iron today. I love that that brand is also cruelty free so um, I do recommend this makeup mirror. Before I started filming with a ring light I felt like it did give off enough light and now I feel like it's not quite enough so um, I feel like it probably for most people it probably is bright enough. Yeah definitely still a favorite and definitely something I would recommend um, unless you like for your like lighted mirror to be just like super bright in which case you're probably going to want to have a lamp next to it or you're going to want to find something a little bit brighter. The next favorite that I had last January was the Lush Cup of Coffee Face and Body Mask. I used that up last year. I don't have it anymore. I didn't end up repurchasing it. Lush is kind of pricey. They're a really cool brand. I'm using one of their shampoo bars right now and it's it's nice. I haven't used it enough times to really have a full opinion of it, but I did really enjoy the cup of coffee mask. I mostly just used it as a face mask. I didn't use it as a body mask, but it smelled like coffee. It was really just like a delight to use because if you love the smell of coffee, it's just so energizing and it has, it's kind of a physical exfoliant. It has, I guess, like coffee grounds in it or some kind of equivalent feeling like grainy stuff in there. 
and so you know as you rinse it off you kind of rub it into your skin and it does kind of exfoliate your skin physically which not everyone likes that for me I don't really have much of a need for a physical exfoliant because I use um, either an AHA or a BHA exfoliant in the rest of my skincare routine and those are just more like those are just chemical exfoliants so they don't have that physical like grain grainy texture but it was a really nice mask if I do ever place an order on Lush or if I go into the Lush store that is something I would consider buying again it's not a favorite anymore because I don't have it anymore <laughs> um, and I guess it wasn't a favorite enough to repurchase but that being said, it was really nice. Lush products though, especially their masks, they're in that kind of tub packaging, don't have a very long shelf life. And I'm not someone who does masks all that often, so for me I really had to push myself to use that up before it went bad or before it reached its expiration date. Um, and so that's something I also have to keep in mind. I probably wouldn't want to get like the giant tub of that because I don't think I'd be able to use it up in time. But it was a really nice mask, and now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, ooh, man, I would love to have that again, because I just, I mean, I love anything coffee-related. <laughs> Speaking of coffee, one of my favorites last January was kind of a food-related product, and it was the Silk Almond Creamer. I still have, not the same one, obviously, but I do have this on hand. Um, I have been repurchasing it on and off for a while ever since I discovered it. But this is their almond creamer. I have the giant bottle. Um, I think in that video I talked specifically about the hazelnut flavor. This is the caramel flavor. I do still love this. I think this is one of the best non-dairy creamers on the market. Um, there's tons of different brands making non-dairy creamers now. I usually find almond milk based creamers to not be creamy enough, but these um, silk almond ones are quite creamy. I like the caramel flavor. I would probably say the hazelnut is still my favorite. They also have a vanilla that's really good. If you are trying to move away from dairy products, this is a really easy switch to make because I feel like it's just as good as any dairy creamer. I am thinking I probably am going to stop buying these though because I'm getting to that point with coffee where I'm fine just adding a little bit of like soy milk, like unsweetened soy milk into my coffee. I don't really feel like I need the super sweet creamers anymore. And I'm like, I guess I don't really need to have that extra sugar in my coffee if I don't really even feel like I need that flavor anymore. Um, I'm kind of going towards less sweet coffees now. I might as well just stop buying it and just use my regular non-dairy milk. I kind of alternate between what non-dairy milk I buy um, just whatever is on sale slash the cheapest at the time. But usually I do unsweetened soy milk or unsweetened almond milk or last week I had um, flax milk which was also really good but not quite creamy enough for coffee. Anyway, I do think that is a really good creamer if you are into like the flavored coffee creamers. It is really good and really nice and creamy. So in my March wrap up video there were really only two favorite products and the rest were kind of just like product reviews and updates and things I didn't like, but I'm just going to talk about the two favorite products in that video since this is just like a favorites revisited. So the first product that I talked about was the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. This is currently in my project pan and I'm working on using it up. I still really like this, but it's not as much of a favorite for me now as it was back then. I do like the Physicians Formula Healthy Foundation a little bit better and that one is much cheaper. Um, this Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation is $40. I still like it and I enjoy using it. It's kind of just like a reliable foundation. Um, but I will say that now that my skin has been a little bit more dry, I do notice it not really accentuating my dry patches of skin on my face, but also not making those areas look any better. Um, if anything, it kind of... You can definitely notice where my skin is dry <laughs> when I'm wearing this. If I do wear this over a really nice hydrating primer, then I don't have to worry about that as much. But if I forget to wear a hydrating primer with this, I'm like, wow, my skin is actually looking kind of dry. <laughs> and so I have to be careful with that. I feel like if you have dry skin, this might not be the best option for you if you prefer more like a more hydrated look. But I would say that this foundation would be great for someone with oily skin. It doesn't have full coverage. I'd say it's kind of a medium coverage. The nice thing about this, and I think this is kind of just how this is marketed anyway, but it is just a very 
natural skin-like finish. It's not dewy, but it's not really matte either. It's just kind of somewhere in between. And it's a very thin, liquidy formula. So I do still like this foundation. I like it enough to use it up. And I mean, I enjoy wearing it, um, especially if I want something that looks skin-like, but I want it to last pretty well throughout the day. But um, like I said, I do just have to be careful with it when my skin is a little bit more dry. I have to make sure that I'm really putting a lot of hydrating layers underneath it. So those are my thoughts on this foundation now. Wouldn't say that it's my absolute favorite. I definitely don't feel like I'm gonna need to run out and repurchase this once it's gone. I think I'd rather stick to drugstore foundations. This actually is the only high-end foundation I've ever had. And I don't know, I feel like now that I've used this, I'm like good to just go back to drugstore foundations now. Um, but there are some other high-end foundations that I want to try eventually. And then the other favorite from my March wrap-up video last year, and this is the last product I'll talk about today, is the Ulta Beauty Juice Infused Lip Oil. I used that up in my Finish 13 by Halloween project pan last year. That was such a nice product. It felt more like a gloss than it did an oil. It had a little bit of thickness to it, so it was almost like it would almost double as like a clear gloss. I really do like the look of a more glossy lip treatment type product. Like I love when lip balms are a little bit more on the glossy side because I feel like it almost doubles as a makeup product. Like if I'm wearing a very light face of makeup and I throw on a lip gloss that has more of that glossy look to it, it kind of just makes me look like I'm wearing lip gloss even though I'm really just wearing a balm. That was something that I kind of used in place of a lip balm as a lip treatment and I felt like it also just did a really good job hydrating my lips um, and I just really liked the feel of it on my lips. It wasn't just like a pure oil that would like sink into my lips immediately. So anyway, I do still have very fond memories of that product but I haven't repurchased it just because I just I haven't really felt the need to. It's not something that I feel like is an essential product in my routine. But if I ever were to see it on like a really good sale, or I think last time I got it as a gift with purchase, I would totally go for it again if I had the opportunity to get it as a gift with purchase again, or, or if it was just on sale. I would love to have it, but it's not like, it's not something I feel like I have to have at all times. So those are my favorites from last January and March. I definitely will plan to do one of these again. I'm not sure when exactly probably at some point in the summer. I think I, the last time I did this was in December. I think it makes sense to do these videos maybe every three months, just to kind of follow up on things and let you know if things are still favorites, because a lot of times I do end up finding new products that end up kind of replacing my old favorites, or I just kind of fall out of love with things and I, you know, I'd like to be able to let you know about that. So this is a really good way to do that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.